So here we are at Bellevue Park in Green Bank and this is the beginning of my journey along Scrubby Creek to take a look at uh, the course of the creek, other little streams that flow into it and uh, it's the land use around it, what sort of condition it's in, any kind of wildlife we might find. But right here in this park, this is where Scrubby Creek begins and I'm going to walk down here and just see if I can find the actual source of Scrubby Creek. So this is where I am right here at this at this park and the the pink that you can see on here these pink lines this is Scrubby Creek and uh, some of these other streams here are little um, little streams that flow into the main uh, Scrubby Creek so there's Scrubby Creek continuing up there goes through Barren Bar there this is the lakes at Marsden we go down past Marsden Library and um, and then finally down meeting with uh, Slacks Creek and the whole lot flows into the Logan River at Meadowbrook at Riverdale Park. So that's the journey we're going to be taking um, along Scrubby Creek in this video. So let's go and take a look starting here at Green Bank. Here in the park, just behind Middle Road at Green Bank, this is where Scrubby Creek begins. And of course, if we, if we take a look just over here, and I don't know if you're gonna see it too well, but as usual, there's rubbish. Weather has been very, very dry, so there's no water on the surface, but uh, this is it. This is where Scrubby Creek begins. So the creek itself, now that we've found the, the source of it, runs parallel to this footpath and uh, vast system at least it was very marshy very swampy rainforest and um, yeah a gigantic area so the path goes down here let's turn that around let's see what's down there so this is the first crossing point of scrubby creek where it uh, flows under a road and there's, uh, this is Hilton Road, still in Green Bank. And you can see the vegetation, everything is, is a bit more dense and greener here, but there's, there's no sign of the creek yet. The ground is completely dry. Normally this is where you would see it flowing, but yeah, as I said, it's been very, very dry. So anyway, we can see where the creek flows. So we're gonna move on to the next location now and we'll see if we can pick up the creek a little bit further on towards Browns Plains. This is Green Road, just come off the Mount Lindsay Highway. And down here, you can actually see our first bit of Scrubby Creek. And uh, that's it. That's the first bit of water we've seen so far uh, on this journey. And uh, as you can see here, the, the creek bed is very, very overgrown. And I've just noticed a sign over here. I was just looking at the at Scrubby Creek there, the first bit of water we've seen, and there's I'll just turn this around. Welcome to Scrubby Creek Trail. And you, we, are here. Okay, so now we're on very noisy Bayless Road, just behind the even noisier Browns Plains Road, and about to cross Scrubby Creek right here. And uh, now we can actually see a creek. Let's have a look. So yeah, it doesn't look too bad on that side, certainly overgrown with weeds and grass and whatnot, but the water looks fairly clear. Uh, if we spin around though, this is the view from the other side, and it's just a big stormwater drain because Bayless Road goes right over the top. Now I've arrived at Barrenbar Wetlands here in Barrenbar, 
and this area here as beautiful as it is is the result of sand mining uh, from the 1960s to the 1980s and there was so much sand mining that they created these huge pits which are now full of water and wildlife and it's a pretty important little ecosystem they've got here approaching a little bridge now and according to the map I was looking at the water down here is actually Scrubby Creek it seems to be the original course of it so even though there was a lot of sand mining here parts of the creek in its natural course is still flowing as it has done I don't know who knows hundreds of thousands maybe even millions of years it's nice, nice just walking around here. Got the water on that side there, and this would all be tree regrowth here. I'll turn around, that's what I'm passing. This is all regrowth. really interesting things about the Barambar wetland is that apart from Scrubby Creek itself which, there's also two smaller creeks that flow into the Barambar wetlands one of those is right there and there's another one in the other direction on the opposite side which was the one on Bayless Road that I stopped at before so this must be a very very low-lying area because it's uh, you know you've got the main Scrubby Creek and then two other streams flowing into it at this point just behind me so uh, yeah doesn't look too bad, does it? So here we are now at the JJ Smith Park on Princess Street in Marsden. And just to my left there, and I'll show you in a moment, are a couple of the very large ponds that uh, were a result of sand mining along Scrubby Creek in this area in the 1960s. You can see at the outlet of one of these large ponds here and I'll zoom in a little bit there is Scrubby Creek flowing off in the distance towards Marsden we'll go through there shortly so because of the sand mining here this is all a totally artificial man-made environment there's nothing here uh, that's original from the time before European settlements and while exploring this park, I've come across someone's discarded or lost boomerang. So it's, it's, it's an interesting example of what, can, of what has happened to Scrubby Creek over the decades of uh, human interference. Though we've got this nice parkland now and these nice lakes, it is an artificial environment. There's, there's nothing natural about this. But anyway, we'll move on. Uh, the next place we'll go to is just behind Marsden Library. So I'll see you there. So I'm just passing Marsden Library now and to my right is the next stretch of Scrubby Creek that we're going to have a look at. So the, the big ponds, the lakes that we were just visiting further up the road, um, I mean, it's probably eight, about 800 metres from where I am now. So let's go and take a look at uh, Scrubby Creek here at Marsden, right behind Marsden Library and also the um, coals. So I've arrived now down at the uh, banks of the creek here behind the coals at Marston Park Shopping Centre and unfortunately it's not a terribly pretty sight. Behind me it doesn't look too bad that way. If you paddle down there you'll get to the um, to the lakes on Princess Street, the JJ Smith Park that we were just at, the sand mining area. But if I turn the camera around now you'll see 
the condition that the creek is in here. As you can see, someone's appropriated some of the Coles trolleys and used them to build a makeshift bridge across Scrubby Creek here. So these trolleys, plus all the accumulated rubbish, really doesn't make this a terribly nice stretch of the creek. Having said all that though, it's not a bad stretch of the creek if you look back towards the, the ponds at the JJ Smith Park. It, just this little spot here may be a, a tiny relic of what this area looked like before, before European settlement. Next stop on our journey is Kingston Railway Station, which is right behind me. And just down here is one of the small little tributary creeks that flow into Scrubby Creek. So um, this one here is, I don't even think it has a name. I think a lot of these smaller little feeder streams don't even have, have names at all. Anyway, this is it. And there is water flowing here and uh, a lot of rubbish, a lot of junk in this small stream. It's a real shame here and it's overgrown with weeds and everything and uh, all the usual stuff that these streams are choked with. The stream here flows down to one of my favourite parts of Scrubby Creek and that's where we're off to next. And so I've now arrived at Gould Adams Park in Kingston and the little stream that we were just looking at flowing near Kingston Railway Station comes down just over there. I'll see if I can turn the camera around. Oh, wrong way. Just over there, the stream is just in there and flows down uh, into Scrubby Creek. So that little tributary is, is just over that way. But yeah, this is Gould Adams Park and I'm gonna have a look at some of the, the little lakes and, um, and the streams that flows through here. What Scrubby Creek looks like here at Gould Adams Park in Kingston and as usual the uh, expected car tires in the water. Water doesn't look too bad though it's uh, a little bit murky down there but not, not bad at all considering how dry it's been and just on the other side of the water there there's clear evidence that this was burnt out recently uh, no doubt deliberately started. And here's one of the, the two main bodies of water at Gould Adams Park. Now we've visited Barren Bar wetlands and also the lakes at Marsden, both of which were the result of sand mining. I'm not sure about this though. This may be a natural open body of water. I saw a, uh, an aerial photograph from 1946 from this, uh, showing this area here and this lake seemed to have been there even then. Sand mining didn't get started really until the 1960s. So unless uh, something else comes up, I'd say this is, this is naturally a natural lake. And this is another of the two main lakes here at Gould Adams Park. Again, I don't think it's the result of sand mining. It just seems to be a, a natural lake here. Just around this way, that's the Beanley train line. Just come down here. the water flowing here under the bridges of the Beanley train line. When I was at uh, the JJ Smith Park at Mars and I came across a boomerang here at Gould Adams Park, I found a baseball. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if this could be in some way, in some small part, Put back the way it was because this whole area here was much more like a rainforest all rainforest much darker and a, a much huge variety of of plants and trees and and wildlife and it's much more of a a, a mono culture now it's it's this drier bush so yeah it was all 
or rainforest. Wouldn't that be beautiful? There's little tiny pockets of rainforest left in Logan, but it's certainly not in this park and not in this area. I think that would be nice if a little bit of that rainforest could try to be regenerated here along the banks of the creek. At this location here, this is in Kingston and Scrubby Creek is right in front of me here. Uh, that's Meakin Road just up there, which uh, this part of it dead ends here, but Meakin Road keeps going up towards the, the Ikea. But down here in this, this little bit of, I don't think it's a park or anything, it's a, a view which hardly anybody, anybody sees here. It's um, very much hidden away. And uh, strangely, you can see a lot of trees that have either been deliberately placed there, almost like little bridges, or they've just fallen down, but they seem quite uniform. And it looks like there's uh, some rubbish in there, maybe a wheelie bin or something like that. But there's, um, there's no houses here. Uh, there's no walking tracks. There's, there's nothing really. This is a, a very uh, quiet and out of the way part of Scrubby Creek. From all the areas of Scrubby Creek I've seen so far on this journey, this one looks to be the most untouched. There's uh, some, some beautiful trees here and quite a variety of trees as well. Uh, a lot of paper barks, a very, very marshy, swampy kind of area. And I can see some birds down there. So, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a nice little spot down here and no one ever sees it, except you. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice little place along Scrubby Creek and one hardly known by anyone. So uh, I'm glad it's there, it's, uh, it's just behind me. So now we're off to just under Queens Road and uh, we're heading towards the creek now, but the road I'm on here is the original Queens Road. And if you have a look down, you can actually see there it is, the old double line, the, the painted white line on the road. So this is the, the original Queen's Road. And the reason why Queen's Road was elevated, put up there, was because Scrubby Creek overflowing, overflowing um, the old Queen's Road. So they had to um, build up the landscape around here to prevent flooding. So here's where the first Queen's Road ends, although it extended a few more metres further along where it joined Logan Lee Road. Um, so everything you can see out there, all that, that's, that was built up. And just there on the bridge, you can see LCC Logan City Council 1996. So whether that means this current bridge was built in 96 or uh, upgraded or what have you, I don't really know how they work it. But so yeah, there's the, there's the new Queen's Road. And we'll just pan the camera back around and there's where the old Queen's Road ends. But anyway, here's some more of Scrubby Creek and the water level is very, very low at the moment. Um, I've seen this much higher. In fact, there's, uh, this is the lowest I've ever seen it. And as usual, there's car tires. There's always car tires. I don't know why. People can't seem to throw them away where they're supposed to go. So here you can see the joining together of Scrubby Creek and Slacks Creek. Unfortunately, the local landowners wouldn't give me permission to shoot there. So I've had to resort to images from Google Earth. And here we go. So there's Scrubby Creek in the middle ground and Slacks Creek on the left and Logan Lee Road is in the middle right. There in blue, you can see the course of Scrubby Creek. And uh, it is clearly the main water course in this area of Logan. On the left in yellow is Slacks Creek, and it seems to be a tributary of Scrubby Creek. The two join together there. You can see where they, they meet. That's the place where I really wanted to shoot. So the two creeks join together and they flow on their way through Tanamira and uh, towards Riverdale and the Logan River. However, the, our next stop will be Murray's Road. And here I am at Murray's Road in Tanamira, 
and it's got a little bit of a hint of the old rainforest that used to be here. This area here is um, it's cooler. You can feel the drop in temperature here. And it's, it's really pleasant here. It's a nice change of pace because probably about 400 meters that way is the Pacific Highway and Hyperdome is over there. This really looks like a little bit of remnant rainforest here on the banks of the creek. And uh, it's so much quieter and as I said, cooler. It's a, a nice little spot. And you can see just how close the water is uh, to the edge of the road here, which is right here. Yeah, a little, little tiny bit of rainforest. So this spot here is not too far from where the combined Scrubby Creek and Slacks Creek flow into the Logan River and that's going to be the end of the journey and the end of this video. So we're going to head over there now and uh, take a look at that place. So here I am in Riverdale Park. This is a special spot concerning Scrubby Creek because it's actually the point where Scrubby Creek and Slacks Creek combined as one creek flow into the Logan River. Let's go have a look at it. And there it is. Woohoo! The end of Slacks Creek, Scrubby Creek. It's all one combined creek by now. And there it is flowing into the Logan River. And of course, the Logan River flows into Moreton Bay and Moreton Bay out into the Pacific Ocean. Final look here at uh, Riverdale Park while I'm here. There's Slacks Creek slash Scrubby Creek here, and uh, in the background you can see and hear the Logan Motorway. So yeah, Riverdale Park, very nice place. If you haven't been here, come on down and, and have a look. Nice place to take a walk around in, especially on a weekday when there's nobody here.